everybody knows from the way I'm dressed that I like dogging. <laughs> That's what she said. Everybody knows from the way I'm dressed that I like dogging. I'll, I'll do a, you know, a cut thing I'm going to put in the start of the video. It's really important. Animals are not objects. Dogs for life, not for Christmas. Adopt, don't shop. Be prepared for what you're getting into. Don't go into this without thinking about it carefully because it's a lot of responsibility and there's some aspects of it that are quite hard work. I said that. Right, we can put that in at the start as well. Hi, you're with Scott. It's Mental Health Monday. It's midnight. It's always midnight. This is your right ear and your left ear because this is mono. It's actually 8pm GMT because Mental Health Monday is always at 8pm GMT. So, you know, work that out. Here we are. We're doing pets. Before we do that, the first thing I always say every week, if you're feeling at crisis point, here is the Samaritans in the UK. 116123 free phone. You can call them. If you are feeling... Uh, the similar crisis point but you're in America we've got 1-800-273-8255 I'm going to do some chuffing at 12, 12 at midnight pacific time it might be midnight it might be 12 in the daytime the, the midnight of the day um, uh, so <laughs> uh, we are here and uh, if I'm doing the chuffing and laughing and you're like oh this is Mental Health Monday and I've come here and like, I feel it, like I need support you you can write in the comments you, oh, hi I've got a problem we can divert to your thing anytime no problem interesting questions come up absolutely happy with that i'm going to talk about pets today it's going to be a little bit jolly <laughs> but uh if you have got you know serious anything the tone is wrong here then tell us in chat or um call one of these numbers for direct support immediate got loads to edit so we're going to nice nicely neatly chuff along for about an hour and a half <laughs> um and say some interesting things about pets Right, I've got dog depression later on. You'll be interested in that. It's not just for you, it's for your dog as well today. And we've got dog dog thing, pets thing, mental health, choosing a pet, we've got that. And uh, we are Mental Health Monday. So where's my little script? My little script. In this video, we will look at pets with regard to mental health, why they're good for you, how to be responsible when choosing pets and considering getting a pet. We will talk a little about the 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 the. the i already started on that now. We'll talk a little about how there are some negatives, cons, I've written in brackets, cons, like pros and cons. Don't want to get you confused with con with criminals that cons, they call them cons, don't they? Anyway, look, and what to do when you think you may be getting overwhelmed. Oh, so that doesn't work as a little end of a sentence on its own, so now I'll say it again. We'll talk a little bit about how there are some negatives and what to do when you think you may be getting overwhelmed. We'll also look at other ways to engage with animals that's positive for your mental health, but does not require the full commitment of ownership. Huh, there you go, look. That's my first, look at that. That's my first, first little, well, when I say negatives, yeah, there, there, are, there might be, I don't want to make it, um, as you'll come on and see, I'm going to just raise some concerns that I might, you know, I don't want to be here being like, oh, get a fish and get a cat and put them in the same cage and you'll be fine. And like, what the hey? You know, I want to just bring up some, you know, responsibility edge thing and also uh so because we're in the context of mental health as we'll see um or i'll just bring up later uh there might be some aspects of pet ownership that might be difficult for some people who are suffering with mental health issues that they might not you know i don't know maybe the cat gets you up all night like my cat <laughs> you know maybe it does so we'll come on to that in a minute but first oh oh i've written in the script call to action i'm actually going to do it this week but first look here is mental health monday it's our channel web browser look at how big it is now it's got 10 subscribers i'm pleased with that it's got a new video ghost box talk box or psychosis because we talked about that the other week and now i've edited it bam uh it's got little videos that i try and cut and it's got the long full length like podcasty podcasty we're going to get a full podcast in this room it's podcasty style what we're doing now <laughs> you know you know the score you know the score you're here but uh so yeah subscribe to that watch the videos over there even if you've watched them here and been here um watch them over there twice <laughs> that's the rules <laughs> and we've also got ganji kid which is where we dump the full stream full video archive under the bottom there, you can see Ganji Cuts, Edits, Ganji Art Chat, Edits. That's us, Mental Health Monday. Battery Exhausted. Oh, it's going a bit funny there. True by Norn ASMR. We all know what that is. Don't even pretend you don't know anymore. It's been on the news. So, 
that's my shilling go and subscribe to that go and watch it but don't stay here um we are now on mental health monday so animals are not objects oh oh he's not is he he's not is he? he's a vegan he's a vegan look he made this vegan vlog <laughs> just gonna play this without any sound <laughs> while i talk because it's nice pictures uh and later we'll come and look at how to you know support things like this but um Look, I've written some script, and here comes the reading. You'll enjoy it. <laughs> First a note, because I'm a vegan, and I have to do this because I'm a vegan, and we're going to talk about animals, so I've got to do this. Animals are not objects. We should not enslave them, imprison them, and exploit them. We should not breed them for profit, in my opinion. Uh, there are some animals that are obviously wild and untamed, and I kind of think they should remain so. The only argument for a zoo is for conservation these days, because while I get great pleasure from visiting and seeing wild exotic animals at the zoo, maybe the animals don't get the same pleasure from being a captive on display. So I guess it's not on anymore, and we can see these animals in their natural habitat on film or in safaris. So we're lucky now these days we've got that. So conservation, yes. You know, not this one, these aren't zoo animals, but, you know, these are poor farm animals that don't have to do any poor farming anymore. Yeah, conservation, all that sort of stuff. You know, things that are going extinct. I get it, I get it. But, you know, in general, oh, oh, bit bad. Bit bad on the old vegan side. Uh, <laughs> I keep doing uh. Some animals are not natural and not wild. We shaped their evolution through selective breeding. There are the kind that, yeah, there are the kind that we farmed, exploited, killed and ate. <laughs> Yep, there's those kinds. And then there's another very small subset sub 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 There's another very small sub sec there's another very small group of species that we kept at home, initially as working animals, pest controllers, guards and hunting tools, eventually simply as ornaments or for sentimental reasons, and now family members, aren't they? They're family members now, so got that in. Uh the full vegan ideal, long term, is we kind of end this chaotic, barbaric manipulation of the natural world. We don't breed any more animals like ourselves and manipulate them. Cool. Uh, you can have a look at Rick and Morty for that as well. There's a really good Rick and Morty episode, which I've written in my script and I haven't done the research to find out which episode it is. Oh, look at me there. I look tired and I've got a beard. Um, <laughs> Uh, in the Rick and Morty episode, there's the one with Snuggles and they put the thing on his head and it makes him intelligent. The dog, Snuffles, Snowball, I don't know. Anyway, they put the thing and it makes him intelligent and then he starts asking questions and one of the questions he asks is, why did you selectively breed me like this? Would you think it's funny if dogs bred humans with little stumpy legs and funny faces uh, or would you think it was uh, an abomination unto nature? So that was an interesting question that I'm not going to answer. However, there are priorities because... This is why I'm not going to answer that question. There are priorities and there are some longer term and shorter pro term problems. So clearly with veganism, the bigger priorities are these farm animals, the ones that we're killing and eating, those sort of things, and encouraging more people to make responsible vegan choices. And then in the longer term, we will have this knock-on effect of... You know, once we've dealt with all the bigger problems, and of course, as a vegan, I also advocate for human problems because we're animals too. So stopping children from being hungry probably goes above my priorities in most things. You know, uh, people suffering around the world, like people suffering are quite high on my priorities. So we get these things, you know, worked out in order. And once we get down to these, once we've done these bigger things, we'll kind of see that maybe, you know, the animal ownership, you know, the questions about that, they'll come into closer focus. It'll be easier for us to deal with them. You know, right now, in the short term, in our lifetimes, we're probably not going to get to, should we deal with the, uh, you know, pet ownership issue of veganism. We're probably not going to get there. We're probably going to have a big struggle just helping the people first and then the farm animals and the, the world entire. So um, don't worry too much about that in that aspect, I think. I think, and I'm the, I'm the king of veganism, so you have to do what I say when it comes to it. Uh, there's some wonderful tippies. Look at that. That's like mega tippies. Uh, you know, I'm not very good with the old numbers, but that like is a bigger number than we've ever had before, isn't it? It's like a bigger number than ever before. One hundred thousand. A hundred thousand. A hundred grand in tippies. And I should t uh, do it. <laughs> Johnny Depp says thank you, but he wouldn't thank you. He'd just take him and run. Um, so yeah, Johnny Depp popped out for that. Uh, thank you, thank you. I really appreciate it. I really do. Uh, 
I'm still going to rock on with the script though. And I've done a whole video about thank yous this week and we've got, you know, items that we're going to be setting up when they arrive. So uh, there'll be more thank yous coming. Uh, just, you know, you know, you know, deep down how um, quite blown away I am by that actually. It's, it's stopped me from, it's stopped me in my flow. So I'm quite blown away by it. Uh, yeah, where's me, um, <laughs> where's, where's me script? Uh, the unhappy grey area that I advocate for the unhappy grey area that I advocate for, advocate the un, the unhappy grey area that I advocate for as a vegan is to promote the idea we should end breeding and exploitation whilst actively dealing with the suffering of the existing animals. That's the general area I fall in. Is let's end the suffering, stop the breeding and the exploitation, and help the animals that we've got. And I think in our lifetime that will be you know our as much as we can do. <laughs> so what that means, bottom line, is don't shop adopt I've got that here somewhere <laughs> have a nice dog depression choosing an animal a dog is for life I've got oh I had dog don't shop adopt didn't I I thought I got it up earlier I'm, I'm just foolish I don't know what I do these days what this means <laughs> oh you want to be me in my head you want to be me in my head let's big face this so I tried to read my script and it said what this means but I read what this means <laughs> why would I confuse myself by questioning my own what in my script you what I didn't write that you what mate no this means <laughs> what this means bottom line is don't shop adopt and then the edit will have a thing oh yeah I should tell you as well what I'm going to do this week after because I'm committed to this now I've already said it once earlier to Nigel what we're going to do this week is I'm going to get the camera I'm going to video the animals you know my pets the pets the existing ones the ones you know try and share the joy and not wallow in the sorrow so much this week we were going to talk about navy stories uh, Nigel suggested maybe we won't maybe we'll try to celebrate the, the joy so I'm going to take the camera on a doggy walk as well and try and show you uh, the doggy chasing a deer or a Mr. Rabbit or something you know try and show you some of the, the joy so uh we don't get it today we get the vegan fare but um in the next uh when you watch it on the second time around on the, on the youtube you'll get the animals in it as well so that'll be nice won't it and it doesn't count as exploitation because i'm not even going to pay them we can as vegans own pets own you got to do that own you know you keep them on the straight and narrow you don't want them running off but at the same time you want them to have some agency and feeling of uh, self worth and joy you know we're not here to own them and keep them in a little box and bully them are we they're members of the family is a better way to describe it like a child that will never grow up feeding is an issue I believe most of the pet food is made from the byproduct of the animal farming industry so we're essentially consuming the waste rather than creating demand for more slaughter I really hope that that's a quick note on feeding your pets we've talked about it before so I'm not going to I like on it too much because it's a vegan point, not a mental health point. So with all that said, I think pet ownership, whilst a minefield of ethics for a vegan, or the king of the vegans, is very good for your mental health. So thumbs up to pet ownership in general, even though it's a vegan thumb and you're going to be like, oh, you can't say that because you're a vegan. Well, I did. And now that's that. Call to action. <laughs> I've written it. Call to, you don't tell them you're doing the call to action. You just do the call to action. I've written it, so I've said it. What's your favorite animal? <laughs> Call to action. This is a simple one. What's your favourite animal? Tweet me at informal. I'll write it on the screen for the video. <laughs> There's a call to action. You can put it on the comment here. I'm not going to spend too much time talking about it because it's just one of those little call to actions that the people do. Just me and Jake Paul. We're in it together now. Look, Pets. How they help our mental health. Right. Boom. We can move on to the next slide. Next slide, please. This is more reading. <laughs> What if I can't have a pet? That's the the bottom look. Start at the top, mate. Start at the top. Look at Happy Harry here. Look at Happy Harry here. <laughs> Where's the web browser? Look at Happy Harry here. Look, he only got his teeth in. Happy Harry here. Look at him. He's got his little chuffer on his shoulder. Look at that. Look at that. You think you'd do that with a parrot, wouldn't you? No. Got myself a Jack Russell, mate. <laughs> Polly, the Jack Russell. Up there on his shoulder. It looks like Harry Hill. If Harry Hill got, you know, when Harry Hill gets old. Looks like Harry Hill. Nice fleece as well. Nice fleece. You want to keep warm, don't you? While you're out there spraying your graffiti on the graffiti wall. So, uh, photographers always take you to a graffiti wall, don't they? 
graffiti wall. That's their favourite backdrop, isn't it? If you're a band in a band, graffiti wall, graffiti in the background there. These photographers got the job of shooting, uh, an old, an old, shooting for the Mental Health Foundation. Pet, it, maybe it's just stock footage. I don't know. I don't know where they got it for, from. Maybe they, maybe they, you know, booked. Maybe Happy Harry here, Harry Hill, really old Harry Hill here. Maybe Happy Harry Hill, Hill here. Maybe he's, you know, we need someone with a dog for a photo. Oh, we've got just the person. Do you need to do any tricks? No, we don't need any tricks. It's for mental health. Well, he does going on your shoulder. He does, don't worry, we don't need any tricks. I'll just put you down for going on your shoulder. No, we don't need, oh, it's already, okay, okay. We're paying for going on your shoulder now. Well, <laughs> it might cheer people up. All right, fair enough. Let's let's have going on your shoulder. And then he turns up. Up you get. Hey, <laughs> you're not happy, Harry. So there. Look, I've already gone on chuffing. I'm not supposed to be doing this. <laughs> oh no! Oh, the edit. I've, what am I doing? How can a pet help my mental health? Caring for a pet can help our mental health in many ways, including, but not limited to, increasing your physical activity. We've got it over here as well. What's having a dog done for me? We're going to go over it twice. So. This is the bullet points, and we're going to get into it deeper. Increasing your physical activity. Dog owners are likely to take their pet out every day for a walk or run. Or come back here. <laughs> a chase. No. <laughs> Fenton. Every, dog owners are likely to take their pet out every day. Yes, this is true. It's both a pro and a con, as we'll come to later. It's a very good pro, though. This can be a fun way to fit exercise into your routine. And additionally to that, although it doesn't say it here, oh no, it does at the bottom, adding structure, but I'm going to say it here at the start as well. They've mentioned routine. For me, it means some days I have to get up and go out, otherwise the dog's going to do a poo on the floor. I have to get up out of bed. I can't be like, oh, I'm lying in bed all day today, chuff it. I have to. And then quite often, every day, is that I have to go... Uh, I don't have to go out into the countryside, but I choose to, and it's really nice for me. So it's given me this really good routine. After every Mental Health Monday, we we have to um, walk the doggy, don't we? <laughs> Not as much as this pet stream is worth to me. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, do you know what? I never look up how much they're worth. I just, at the end of the month, when it comes in, I'm like, because I don't look at it until it comes in, because until it's actually in, I don't want to count my chickens before they hatch sort of thing. Uh, not vegan to count chickens or hatch them. Oh, well, hatching them might be wrong. Anyway, look, <laughs> uh, I, I wait till it comes in and then it comes in and it's like, wow, this is like more than I could have ever imagined every month. So I'm just pleased that it, and it, it you know, for me, that's amazing. Uh, and I then consider everyone and think, wow, think of all the people that have, con you know, contributed to this. I'm so blessed. That's what I think. So I don't count that, but I mean, I know it's big. <laughs> like, I know it's big in my world, so I just know that. So I don't go and research it. But at the end of the month, we see, and it's like, yeah, stop talking about it. Yeah, look, you know, I mean, just don't embarrass me. Oh, look, oh, you're embarrassing me. Oh, oh you, you just stop, you know. Look, I'm, yeah, I've got to edit it, haven't I? Look. <laughs> Sorry, yep. <yeah. laughs> you put people off. Dog owners are likely to take their pet out. And the routine is fantastic. It after Mental Health Monday, I'm going to take him for his walkie. It gives me a little bit of mental break from whatever I'm doing, as well as physical exercise and that regular routine. You know, you're living the life. It's something that you find quite difficult when you've got mental health. You know, I think most of the mental health things break up a routine quite quickly, don't they? You want to stay in bed. You're not so sure about You're feeling a bit down. Maybe I'm not going to bother. Well, you're going to bother day or night. Wind come shine. You're going to be out there picking up those poopies. Providing companionship. Pets can give you a sense of security and someone to share the day with. Caring for them can help you feel wanted and needed. This can be especially this can be especially valuable for older people or those who live alone. Right, you're going to see something now that's going to blow your mind and it's just a little diversion. I told you I'm not going to do diversions, but I'm absolutely going to do a diversion because this blew my mind the other day. Right, big face. Here is the Amazon and what you're seeing here in the web of the browser. Look at that, that's a cat. But it's not a cat. Okay, it's not a cat, it's a pretend cat, and they give it to people with dementia. And it meows, and it does, like, move in. And look, they've got a little doggy there as well. It's mainly the cats that they're, they're known for. £100. It's like £100. It's really expensive. But people don't really mind when they're buying things for people that are suffering, do they? They spend the money. But I do think you could probably get a similar sort of toy cat that meows without the huge price tag. 
that maybe isn't designed for a dementia patient that maybe is just a toy cat so maybe there's a incongruence in the price here somehow but um yeah exactly a stuffed toy works as well snippy snips knows her stuff so um but this one is the the rolls royce of stuffed toys this one is the ferrari the lamborghini of of dementia pets it brings laughter and smiles to, to resident it's robotic it's it's called robotic so robotic cat joy for all 100 pounds really expensive but yeah so isn't that amazing i mean i'm not dissing it and taking the mic i'm just i think it's quite expensive but um as a concept isn't that amazing because what we've said is for older people or those who live alone well there's another aspect to mental health that we don't really cover a lot on mental health monday that we really should do one of these days which is you know as you get older um, your mental health can deteriorate for other reasons like dementia and this can be really comforting for people like that so not a real animal but just a, even just the concept you know, a baby doll they think is a baby. Wow, that would scare me. That would scare me. I don't know what I'd feel like if I had dementia, but, you know, the worry of having to look after a, a real baby. Oh, sorry about that on the microphone. That was a cup of tea. But, yeah, so the concept is real. It really works. We like that. Can I get the web browser to move so you can see it better? That's better. So it's valuable for older people or those who live alone and feeling wanted, needed, needed, Feeling wanted and needed, a sense of security, someone to share the day with. This is companionship, isn't it? And it's com provided by a pet. So I think that's a really good concept. I think it's really good. And it's surprising, isn't it, that not a human, <laughs> not a human. And we didn't go over this a lot in the vegan bit at the start, whether an animal is sentient or not. Of course, I believe they are sentient. They have their own thoughts, drives and desires, their own characters. And of course, that's why the companionship thing works. Because they respond to us and, you know, sometimes they talk back, you know. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Companionship. Reducing anxiety. The companionship of a pet can help to ease your anxiety. Good. I'm not going to go over that heavily. We've got actual episodes on anxiety. But I'm sure there are lots of ways where having a pet around does make you feel more calm. Boosting self-confidence. Hang on, I'm just going to read what you said. I know a disabled lady who regularly visits our local cat cafe because she's unable to have a cat in her apartment. That's nice. It's not vegan, though. They shouldn't be exploiting them. <laughs> Do they pay those cats? <laughs> um, Grey area. Grey area, I suppose. Grey area. If you've got a cafe and you've got some cats, why not have, you know, why not house as many cats from the rescue as you can? Good, a good concept. Um no, I just questioning that what they do is like I just explained. You got a cafe, and you you. <laughs> it, it's let me do big face. Um, the the original concept came from uh, Japan, I believe. Um, for that exact reason that Snippy Snips was saying that for companionship, but yeah, it's caught on in a big way with the charities and the animal um, welfare charities because um, if you own a cafe, why not fill it with cats? It means that you've got nice cats and you can home some more cats. So that's probably good. Uh, on the negative, if you don't want to home cats, you weren't thinking about it and you're going to breed and buy. And, you know, if you were not running a cafe for any reason and you decided just to buy a load of cats, yeah, shelter kitties, 100% with thumbs up. Um, but someone who wants to set up a, a business and wants to just you know oh we'll have goldfish tanks and we'll have cats as objects for decoration you know not that concept that bad so there's a couple of ideas that are juggled up in the air and where the balls fall like we said at the start of this episode is it's generally good <laughs> it's generally good there are some bad examples out there but generally it's good so yeah i like that cat cafe as long as they're responsibly, you know, supporting a shelter and charity and rehoming the kitties. Because, yeah, you can have loads of cats in the cafe and cats don't mind, do they? They go around. The only thing I'm confused about it is I'm sure if I was on the, <laughs> if I was on the, um, you know, you have to do a food uh, standards, you know, your dirty kitchen, clean kitchen award and, you know, four gold stars, five gold stars. Excellent. Don't want to eat in a dirty kitchen. Or the hygiene man comes around and does an inspection. If I had loads of cats running around, I'd be like, you keep these cats out of the kitchen. I tell you, if I was the chef, I'd be like, you keep these chuffers out of the kitchen. <laughs> oh, yeah. Cat cafe. Yeah. No, they're, they're generally good. They're generally good. Right. Here we go. We And it's also good to be able to interact with um, a pet like that. You know, young people, people who can't have... Um, older people people who can't have their own pets it's also good for them to be able to go and um we're going to come to that at the end that's the end is other ways to engage with animals that aren't owning them <laughs> uh okay 
I'm going back to the web browser and I'm going little in the corner. Boosting self-confidence. Pets can be great listeners, offer unconditional love and won't criticize you. I got a dog that bit me a few times, but generally he did love me. Genuinely. This can help your self-confidence, especially if you feel isolated or misunderstood. You know, that's so powerful, that. That's so powerful. Uh, two points here rolled into one. Pets can be great listeners. An, uh, an old fella once told me while I was walking my dog, he said, do you talk to your dog? And I said, absolutely, I talk to my dog. And he said, do you tell it your problems? And I said, I, I guess. I don't know. And he said, if you tell it your problems, you'll never tell anyone else. You'll always keep your secrets. I thought, fair enough. <laughs> I wonder what weird secrets you've got. Let's ask your dog. Um, but I couldn't get any information out of his dog. So <laughs> I had to leave it. But uh, yeah, like talking to people, like I'm doing now, I'm in an empty room really in, in the real world. But in the real world, you're around in your room listening to me through the magic. But, you know, talking to someone, getting the voices out <laughs> of your body into the world. The voices. I'm joking, but I'm not joking. Uh Putting voice to your thoughts, even if it's to your animals, creating that dialogue, they, you know, they do sometimes talk back. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's really good for you. They offer unconditional love and won't criticize you is a separate point rolled into this, which is a really important one, is that your animals see your pure heart. You know, they know you're kind, you treat them well, if you treat them well. The animals see your pure heart. So where the rest of the world, the people, you might get into difficulties, certainly with mental health, you can have problems engaging with people sometimes. It's something we want to work on. At no point is your dog going to say, you know, I'm not talking to you today. You know, if you're kind to your dog, your dog's kind to you. If you're kind to your cat, your cat's kind to you. They see your pure heart. They offer you unconditional love and won't criticize you. That even counts for fish. They help you to meet new people. Why are you what? Oh yeah, you're right. Wait, your cats do criticize you. And me, yeah, my cats do. But it's not, <laughs> yeah, okay, maybe cats is not unconditional. Maybe it's not unconditional. I don't know. Yeah, she does love me really. She just wakes me up at four in the morning to make sure that food bowl is full. You're not feeding me enough. You're not letting me out when I want to be let out. <laughs> Pet me here, not there. Yeah. yeah. Stop. Don't pick me up. Uh, yeah they do they do the cats are a bit more critical we've just discovered uh, they help you to meet new people dog owners often stop and chat to each other on walks that's nice but other pets can be a way to meet new people too in pet shops training classes or online groups for example really clever point that I didn't really think of and haven't written in my script but yeah you get into the pets you find out more about them you do your learning you might end up at the dog training class or at the fish fancy as meeting or at the um <laughs> trying to think of a range of pets i've done dogs cats and fish birds uh yeah you might end up uh chasing your bird in the park <laughs> and meet people that way um my dog's so forced to, yeah you're forced to interact with people <laughs> no it's all right really he's fine he's fine adding structure to your day Having to feed, exercise and care for a pet can help you keep to a daily routine which can help you feel more grounded and focused. It can give your day purpose and a sense of achievement. It can give your day purpose and a sense of achievement. That's quite interesting, isn't it? A sense of achievement and purpose just from feeding the dog and, you know, walking the cat. <laughs> Pets may also help with specific conditions. People with ADHD may benefit from the structure and routine of pet needs. I'll tell you what, I know for a fact that uh, I, I know a young young boy with um, learning difficulties, ADHD. Uh, I think he's on the autistic spectrum and the relationship he has with his pet dog is fantastic. It's brilliant. It's really good for him, really comforting for him. So yeah, I absolutely attest to that. Autistic people can benefit from having a pet, it says there as well. So I just said it. <laughs> How can I choose the right pet for me? We're going to come on to that in a minute. We've got a better one than your website. For that, we've got a better one than yours. So we'll just briefly just jump over that. What if I can't have a pet? That's coming up later. That's coming up later. You just chill your boots. Where am I on my script? Pets, they're hard work though and a huge commitment. Boom. I'm going to give you a little lecture. I'm not going to give you a lecture. I'm not even going to watch this video because copyright and all that business. But the general principle that we want to drive home here, really important really important really important maybe i should have put this at the start of the video a dog is for life is a concept that was raised by the dogs trust i believe as a charity campaign not just for christmas 
Doggies for Life is what it's been shortened to, to stop people buying people dogs as gifts. And then the kids love them at Christmas. It's a puppy. It's brilliant. It gets into January, February. It becomes hard work. They don't realise how big it's going to get, how much exercise it's going to need. No one wants to pick up the poo. It's barking in the back garden. Nobody wants to take it for its walk. So they put it into a shelter. And that's how we end up with lots and lots of dogs that are unwanted, end up in shelters, uh, being rescued, or sometimes even tragically um, euthanised. I think in America you have shelters that are forced to euthanise because they're so full. In the UK, the Dogs Trust don't euthanise dogs if they're healthy dogs. They keep them, sometimes for a very long time if no one wants to home them. So there's this knock-on problem of pet ownership of people who don't understand the responsibility and then get into the responsibility and it becomes a big problem. They end up having to give up the animals. So really clear here really clear from me that uh, they're hard work and a huge commitment. You get a lot back, but it's hard work and a huge commitment. And it also means that, for example, most of us have got a friend who will look after our dog if you want to go on holiday. But when I did have Navin, here's a, here we go, Nigel, here's Navin coming up. Um, when I had a difficult, I had a difficult dog, you sometimes... We're going to come on to adopting animals a bit later, but you know you sometimes get a difficult animal. It might not be through breeding or adoption or making this choice or that. It might just be. It might not be through the way you treat them. You might sometimes get you know a dog that wants to run off or you know a little nipper or something. Or in my case, quite a big nipper. So when you have these issues and they become your responsibilities, uh, for me, I took on the responsibility. I saw it through to the end, and it meant I haven't. I did. I went to Ireland, didn't I? So I did have a little holiday, but I wasn't prepared. To, and I did uh, Sweden, filming in Sweden, and I did go to America. So actually, I did go, and I've got a family that were used to dealing with the dog and could take care of him. So that was fine. Uh, but later on in his life, for sure, when he got more difficult, I absolutely didn't want to leave that responsibility on someone else's shoulders. So uh, you've got to take that into consideration too. If you travel a lot, or if you want to travel a lot, or if you might change your lifestyle, move to another state in the next five years, you will probably still have this lovely companion. So they have to be considered in your life choices too. So a lot of her, lot, yeah, lot of hard work and a huge commitment, but really good as well. Really. Um, you know, you get a lot out of it. Don't shop, adopt is what I've written. And this is the charity, uh, the Dogs Trust. I'm sure you've got different charities all over the world for animal, um, what do you call them? Animal shelters. Yeah. And there's another point I really want to make here as well. I'm going to make it here now while I'm, where's my script? If you're feeling overwhelmed, if you've got a dog in good faith, if you thought uh, you would, looked through all the work, paperwork and uh, things haven't worked out in the way you expected even though you've done all the hard work if you're worried about this commitment if you're feeling overwhelmed this is another really important point to make on Mental Health Monday which is it's okay for you to ask for more help it might be that eventually your companion pet sadly gets rehomed that might be the case it might be you just need a break and somebody to take the weight off your shoulders for a bit and they need a little pet holiday you know with a different family member a different person uh, it might be that someone else can help with that routine to maybe uh, today for mental health monday i asked my mom if she would please walk the doggy so i could prepare for mental health monday so we did that earlier so having a, someone else that you can just you know please i need a bit of help today uh that really makes a massive difference. Sharing the commitment, sharing the duties with someone else can really help. And if it gets to the point, uh, we've got a friend who had to rehome a, a bird and I don't know all of their thinking process, so I'm not gonna you know, state things on their behalf. The bird has been rehomed where the bird has got uh, another bird around it and it's nice for the bird. So that's good for the bird. It's not been a negative that the bird got rehomed. Uh, the person who had the bird felt maybe a bit overwhelmed, a bit, um, I was saying about my cat waking me up in the night. You know, if you're having a hard time with your mental health and your uh, companion animal is making a negative effect on your mental health, I think Mental Health Monday here, you know, top line, bottom line, it's okay to put your mental health first. It might mean, as I said, rehoming the animal and so when we talk about shelters i think it's a real sad thing when someone irresponsibly gets an animal uh, is a present you know they think it's going to be fun 
they thought uh, a big tough dog would be you know lots of fun and then they're worried when it bites their kids or uh, they thought uh, <laughs> a wild cougar would make a great house pet and then they're worried when it you know attacks the postman uh, you know these sort of things are terrible shames but at the same time we are human and we can underestimate things and if you're suffering mentally it's no it is a shame of course it's it's not a, you know a wonderful thing but it's no great shame for you to ask for help and somebody else will be able to help you with that responsibility it might be that through one of these shelters you're you know because you, you care about these animals as well you don't just want to discard them do you so that's the sad thing about this when it comes to mental health uh, but it might be that you can arrange for them to have a good life not i'm not saying better like i said i think you could probably do a good job but if you need help doing that job or if someone else can do a different job a better job uh, and that's what needs to happen then i think it's fair for us on mental health monday to say thumbs up to that too so these shelters are not just here to take the waifs and strays as they come up they're also here to help people who have got issues it might be that it might be temporary you know it might be that you can find a temporary place in placement so yeah said that i'll take your car we'll have to ship her off the uh, airmail won't we should like that <laughs> Oh, and over there it wouldn't be two in the morning, so she wouldn't do it. She only does it here because she's on exotic time zone. <laughs> pets have mental health too. What the chuff? Okay, we're going to choosing a pet, and then we're going to do pets have mental health too. So I've said all this about that. It's important before you think about getting a pet. Let's go whip up a browser. So this is not quite Mental Health Monday, is it? It's choosing a pet. But it is because it's important. It's important to think about. And I believe that looking at these things that I was looking at earlier, uh, looking at these is actually really interesting when you start thinking about how you yourself live. I'm going to copy it and I'm going to paste it into chat because I think we often underestimate our own needs. And paste it into chat underestimate our own needs as humans that's one of the things we've been learning in mental health monday is you know we kind of underestimate our self-care so thinking about these aspects is interesting for ourselves as well so let's get into it place exercise time spend the knowledge place these are straight and it spells pets look p-e-t yes yeah great pets k pets k <laughs> doesn't spend spell pets it spells pets k so yeah okay place what size garden do you have all pets need space to run and play but dogs in particular need regular access to a safe and secure outdoor space many cats also enjoy being able to exercise outdoors and rabbits and guinea pigs need access to a large run or a garden to be happy and healthy fish not so much but that's interesting isn't it from our point of view you need space to run and play we don't all live in uh big spaces and if we do we fill them with things <laughs> We don't use our gardens as exercise zones, do we? So we need to go out into the woods sometimes, or the countryside, or the park, or the gym. Need space to run and play. And so if you're thinking about pets, thinking about what you naturally do to get that space, whether you use gym equipment or whether you go out into the woods, might help you to think about what sort of pet might suit you. Maybe a pet might take you into different places. I don't know. But uh, yeah, that's interesting. Exercise. Is it going to do the exercise one next? All right, I'm going to answer the question for us. <laughs> next. How active are you? Dogs enjoy regular walks and playing off the lead wherever it's safe for them to do so. The amount of exercise a dog will need depends on their age, breed and health. All pets enjoy fun games and playing with toys to keep them active. But for smaller pets, you can easily do this in your house. This is a, a, an important point as well, though. Uh, I know uh, a young lady who is in a wheelchair and she controls it with the, the stick so she's not particularly active in a, a sort of general context you might say but of course she's out and about with her dog she's, out and about. she's, got, she's got a lovely little dog she's out and about with it all the time so being physical you know you don't have to be a big hench chuffer running around the woods every day lifting the logs you know getting out and allowing the dog to run i like to go to the woods i'll tell you i'll tell you a secret i like to go to the woods because when i get there I, I let the dog off the lead and he just does his stuff and i don't have to run like if i was on the lead doing the walk around the block and he wanted to run i have to run 
<laughs> he's off the lead he does what he wants uh, I bought a house with a yard for my dog otherwise a condo would have been fine for me I don't know why <laughs> do you know this is pretty send her on a cruise I like that as well <laughs> she'd love that um, I, I'm in England and I've always seen this word always seen it on the, on the American media and I've never known what a condo is never known condominium Con it's probably short for condominium isn't it but I don't even know what that is <laughs> a flat a flat a, uh, a flat an apartment an apartment that's owned there you go as opposed to one that's oh I suppose as opposed to one that's rented from the apartment block yeah so you buy your own apartment in a place and that's your one you don't just you know you don't just it's not like a little hotel room that you've just got for a bit learn something new every day so how active am I? I'm not very active. I don't spend much time. I spend a lot of time outdoors. I like that. I have long walks all year round and I'm not put off by bad weather and muddy pores. Do you see the difference there? That's important. That's important. A lot of people don't mind going out. They have a, a bop out down the park or whatever. But going out all year round in the rain or sludge, and I actually find it really mentally healthy. I find it really mentally sustaining to see the change in the seasons for myself to feel the biting wind to feel the crunch of the snow to uh, even if it's raining and muddy you know I often fall in the mud I often fall in the mud and it always cheers me up <laughs> even though I'm covered in chuffy mud I always find it funny so uh, when we get back from those walks dog has to have a bath that's an extra duty it's like dog has to have a bath all the time people's dogs need to be kept clean you can take them to the groomers or whatever but if it's your house and your dog and it's covered in chuffing mud more duties so it's worth you know pointing that out and of course different dogs need different levels of bath don't they <laughs> but yeah I'm a I'm a big chuffer I am uh, look there's me out in the snow not holding hands with anyone usually I'm on my own really to be fair um, how much time do you have to spend with your pet so before we get onto that, I've just jumped onto it before I did exercise. Before we do that, let's consider exercise for us because it just you know makes the point and it's really interesting that we also as animals need that regular exercise. And I described the changing seasons and being out in the elements. We probably don't all need to be up a mountain. We probably don't all need to swim in a lake. But seeing some of the life, feeling some of the, the elements, being part of the world doing some exercise we definitely all need that we're animals too time how much time do you have to spend with your pet pets are generally sociable and dogs especially love your company it's really important they aren't left alone for longer than four hours as dogs can become lonely anxious and distressed just like us walks training playtime feeding cleaning their home and equipment or cleaning up after your pet <laughs> chucking that chuffing squeaky toy Grooming and visits to the vet can start to add up and might take more time than you think. That's interesting. They've started to bring in this extra bit as well, haven't they? The vets, the grooming. Things might take more time than you think. Do you have time to spend on your pet? Good. What about yourself? Are you spending time on yourself every week? Are you really busy with little free time? Out the house for more than four hours most days? Are you getting to spend a little bit of quality time for you, recharging those batteries every day? Are you out the house for most of the day, but at home and free once you're at home quite a lot? That's in the middle, isn't it? That's probably most of us. Most people go to work, but when we get back, we've got a bit of time. That's the balance. Loads of free time to devote to my new pet. Sounds great. Sounds great, doesn't it? I've got loads of free time. I'm one of those because I didn't have a job for a year because the corona shut me down from working and I decided to become, become a carer instead. So I, I did have a job, but I didn't consider it a job. It was just I was caring for my nan and staying home. So I had loads of free time. But you've got to consider this one about yourself. Have you got loads of free time to devote to your pet right now when you're in the midst of a mental health depression spell? And if you were to push on and do the things that you want to do in your life, if you made a list of targets, goals, if you get that job, if you you know move to this new place, will that change the amount of free time you have? And is having lots of free time right now conducive to a positive mental health state are you spending too much time at home are you spending enough time as we said before recharging your batteries making sure you feel good are you spending enough time pushing out into the world trying new things and improving your mental health in that way that's worth considering i like this this is good fun isn't it i've got loads of free time next except i don't really oh i can't go back now oh i can 
Um, I'm not out of the house all the time, but the other thing I find is that I'm editing quite a lot these days. Yay, I'm back in the back in the groove. But when the animals are doing their tricks, you've seen it on stream, haven't you? When they're all doing their tricks <laughs> and I've got to try and do my edit, I have to get up all the time and it breaks my concentration and stuff. So the edit suffers, the animals don't. But it's worth noting that you might feel like you've got a lot of free time because you're sat there writing a book. But if you get a dog, that writing the book might not suddenly still feel like lots of free time to write the book, mightn't it? So got to consider your life and how these companions will fit into your life because they do take priority when it comes to their care, their well-being uh, and their mental health, as we will come on to see. How much money could you spend on your new pet? That's a strange question, isn't it? Well, I could spend forever. I could spend all my money. <laughs> I just buy them gold steaks and no that's not vegan look it's not the initial cost of just getting a new pet you need to consider food equipment toys flea and worm treatments pet insurance premiums replacing a chewed up bed or unexpected vet bills it all adds up significantly over the lifetime of your pet especially as they get older or develop health problems i can afford and it gives you the the money like <laughs> i suppose how much i don't even know how much we spend i'm not I'll be honest, I'm not the sole arbiter of the spending of, on the animal. Um, I would choose to spend as much as I could, but I don't know if I can afford it. You know, if I were to do my actual budget and it was just me and my budget, because like I say, I'm lucky that other people like quite happily buy things for that dog, but um, I wouldn't necessarily be able to afford all of the luxuries that he enjoys. That's just the damn truth. Uh, we'll just go in the middle for ticking, but it... it it's important to think about, isn't it? It's, right, it's made me think about that even more now, yeah. They, they can be very... And when you think about it over the year, now I'm thinking about it, it adds up. Yeah, they can be quite a, a cost. So you've got to be prepared for that because, again, their their priorities come quite highly. Uh, uh, something you might notice about... Um, this is something I worry about people who have animals when they're homeless is all the reasons we've said so far it's a great thing they're companions uh, they can help them with their mental health routine and stuff uh, there is a, a negative and a worry that they don't have the money to support the animal if it were to be sick and need to go to the vet or to feed it the full um, range of diet it might need but quite often I've spoken to homeless people who have pets they put their pets welfare before their own uh, so quite often that is the case but yeah just interesting points to raise things to think about let's talk Let's spin this on its head. How much money do you spend on yourself? Are you doing these things, food, equipment, toys and stuff? And are you getting to do your own insurance? And I don't do enough of that. I don't have an insurance policy for my, you know, this and that. I just can't afford it. Absolutely. But uh, it's not just food, is it? Stuff like that. Um, doing your own bills and, and finances and budget. Is a huge part of people's mental health concerns. I haven't. This isn't a finance channel, so I haven't tried to bring this up as a big topic. We will have different problems uh, when in life, and we will have, I believe, the same worries about money. Even though some of us have more of it, it seems. It seems there. Are, I've seen people who had lots of money, like end up losing it all and struggling and having the same worries as someone who didn't have. As, as much money and some people with big businesses who are spinning so many more plates and responsible for so many people that even they feel so money is a stress for everyone I get that I get that so and how much money are you spending on what and how is a huge part of mental health concerns so I, it's just brought that up for us though it's interesting I think it's interesting the final one look donate to PDSA down the bottom there <laughs> Maybe I should because they've, they've uh, provided... I've got my regular people who I like to support. How much do you know about the pet that you want? Right, knowledge. This is a big one. We're dropping knowledge bombs. I wrote some lyrics, some, some lyrics, didn't I? Earlier, the other day. I'm not going to say them. <laughs> this isn't hip-hop time. This is knowledge time. Uh, we have a local charity, Frosted Faces, that rehomes old dogs and they pay for the medic medical care of the dogs you adopt. Wow, that's amazing. Paying for the medical care of the adopted dogs, like that that ongoing, that is amazing. Uh, they can get quite expensive if you don't. Uh, we've got a pet plan, I think, because when we've had 
lots of experience in the past. You don't know what could happen, and you're going to want to. It's a family member. You don't have an NHS for the dog, so yeah. Knowledge. We're a nation of animal lovers, but the reality of owning a pet can be different from what we expect. Researching as much as you can about the species and breed of pet you want is really important. And real life experiences of people who already own that pet and advice from a vet are essential. Make sure you know about the Animal Welfare Acts and the five welfare needs that each pet needs to be healthy and happy. The Animal Welfare Act means that pet owners have a duty of care to the welfare needs of their pets to ensure they're physically and mentally healthy and happy. The five needs are, and we can go over this for ourselves as well, uh, but first, just, just knowledge. Knowledge about ourselves is really important, isn't it? Knowing what to, to do, how to fix it. That's what we're doing here on Mental Health Monday. I think that's a really good point. Do you know enough about your own biology, your own mind, to be able to push forward in the right ways? That's why we need educating, all of us, all the way through our lives. It's why we should strive to educate ourselves. I love it. Brilliant. How much you know about the pets you want is huge. I've had direct experience in life. Uh, my dad got a dog that was not what he expected. <laughs> or maybe it was, but he didn't listen to the real life experiences of the people who already own those pets. Maybe that was the case. It's hard to do that. You know, it's hard to know because you, you read things, you listen to them, but you don't really know until you've been in the situation yourself, do you? That's the, the same with lots of things in life. Environment. Let's look at these five needs. And we've got these same needs, remember. Environment. Give them a safe, suitable place to live. Absolutely. We want to feel safe, don't we? All of us. Diet. Feed them the right type and amount of food. Absolutely. Keep yourself physically healthy. It helps with your mental health. Behaviour. Allow them to show normal behaviour patterns. That's big, especially for us vegans. <laughs> yeah, the behavior, yeah, normal behaviour patterns. It's not about me bullying my dog into... Or, of course we want obedience, of course we want good behaviour, and of course we train it, but it's not about me bullying my dog if he wants to do a bit of a run. It's not about me uh, being angry at my cat if she wants to scratch. I'm angry about the chair, so I get her a scratchy post. So they need to exhibit their normal behaviours. Companionship. Some pets like to live alone, whilst others need the company of other pets. That's interesting. It's not just they need your company. Some animals, uh, we talked about the bird earlier and it being rehomed with other birds. So it would actually benefit from that. Please don't remove kitty claws. Yeah, that's a, a huge one. Um, we don't do that in the UK generally. Uh, in the UK, we generally have... The, the culture of cat ownership in the UK is a bit more free and easy. You get a cat, you feed it, it does what the chuff it wants. <laughs> but I know that other cultures... They keep the cats indoors, maybe, and don't even let it out. Uh, and even in the UK, people do that. It's you know, there's a there's a variety within the cultures. Um, so there's a a spectrum of cat ownership behaviours from the, the the owners and the amount of cat behaviours they allow them to exhibit to the point. Oh yeah, you have urban coyotes. There you go. So you know, you don't just let them chuff about, do you? <laughs> so uh, you know, all these different reasons, all these different ecosystems that I'm not entirely knowledgeable about. But in England, thankfully, we don't have that. So we've got a fox up our road. We've got a fox. We've seen it a number of times, but uh, it doesn't kill my cats, thankfully. So we just let them do what they want. <laughs> Maybe that's my problem. Maybe I should be, you know, giving them more of a routine. Uh, you know, we need you in by 10 o'clock, please. And you cannot wake me up at four o'clock this, this evening. Thank you. Health. Keep your pets in good health and seek vet advice if they're ill or injured. Basic, isn't it? Same with us. That's the main thing we're doing here, isn't it? Mental Health Monday. It's part of that health thing. Cool. That's the PDSA. They're saving pets and changing lives. They're a British charity. I'm not going to promote a specific charity and ask you to support a specific charity because I know that all over the world there are lots and lots of different ones and actually I believe that the smaller local charities probably do really good work and have a harder time being supported financially, a uh, harder time marketing and promoting their businesses. If you know a small mom and pop shop, uh, local animal shelter, then they... they Oh, keep the table they need your support um round our way it's the avon cat rescue that over our lifetime we must have given a bajillion cats of 
can, you know, a bajillion cans of cat food too. So yeah, make sure you support your local ones as well. They really need your help. But of course, these big organisations, they do get. Um, where's me browse window? These big organisations, they do get a lot of support from the public, which is really important to them. But they also get uh, bigger support from, uh, I believe. Don't don't hold me to this but they also get a, a bigger financial support network from patrons from the government from uh other aspects they've got charity shops they've got like business aspects to them um so there's frosted faces foundation is a non-profit that does promise yeah that sounds nice that sounds nice uh there is one other aspect of dogs here that i'm going to bring up quickly just because it's me isn't it and i have to i worry about the Dogs Trust is a good example. I worry about the fact that their business is predicated on having a supply of rescue dogs. So let's say, for example, everyone in England gets all excited, goes out and rescues a dog, the shelters are empty. This charity is not going to keep producing profit because you pay money to the, the charity. To I don't know if it's profit, actually. It might just be... You know, you cover costs because they probably spend a lot home in these dogs, don't they? So I'm not at certain on this, but I worry, I worry that there are some animal charities that if we were to fix their problem, would then sort of go out of business and that there might be a kind of economy here of never ending supply of dogs, never ending, you know, shelter business i don't want to support a never-ending problem i want to try and fix it but like i said it's big picture thing small picture thing i can't fix the big picture thing of how many dogs there are of how these charities maintain their finances of what the directors uh, of how the directors balance out the payments of how the directors pay themselves i can't fix that so what i can do is to help the animals so um baja animal sanctuary rehomes ferals from the streets of mexico wow that sounds pretty uh like in the uk we've got wild like you'd say feral we just call them um stray because they don't stay out for long uh but we do have a few feral cats maybe but yeah we don't have as many um as many street animals as they do in places like mexico what we do have is um a ready supply of street animals from romania for example and there are charities that specialize in moving them from places in europe to the UK where they can get better accommodation, better homing, better families. Uh, and some people would say, oh, don't import animals from abroad. Don't import them because we want to fix our own problem first. But it's a wider net problem, isn't it? If they're not fixing it over there, maybe we can help. And this is, again, plays into my worry of, do they find a, a supply of animals because they want to make sure they're constantly getting animals through their shelter for the directors to make profit or is it because we want to fix the lives of every animal well either way it fixes the life of every animal so let's try and fix the life of the animal uh they're predominant breeds from from Romania. i don't know i don't know i think they're probably more likely to be mixed breeds there is this problem of pedigree ownership which i haven't gone into here I haven't gone into here we've we've got two points to make about um the negatives the cons we've done a bit of them through the episode so i'm not going to repeat some of them but we've got two points to make about the cons and i'll deal with your question right now so i don't know if there are predominant breeds but one of the cons in the uk one of the cons and across the world is that the kennel club came together i should get them up i haven't got a picture of them i'll leave it on this the kennel club came together in victorian times i believe it was the uk but also america i think there was an american kennel club and what they did is they said look we're going to draw lines around what a dog should be I'll go big face. We're going to draw lines around what a dog should be. We're going to say, let's take, for example, the beagle. Its legs should be this long. It should have a straight back. It should have a, a shape of a nose like this. Draw its head. Its tail should stick up. Da, da, da. That's the beagle. That's what that should look like. And then breeders have a breed standard to aim for. And then we can judge them on who's got the best dog based on the breed standard. And it removed the subjectivity around who's got the best dog because we've got a standard that we can measure them against but they simply made that up themselves the victorian kennel club the members of the group in the victorian times made that up themselves and as snip says here they breed in health problems they didn't make up these breed ideals based on what's good for the dog or they didn't understand the evolutionary biology at play they simply did it for aesthetic reasons so now some years later 
it's this weird concept that the perfect beagle looks like this and you go to crufts and this is a really good example of a um a borzoi <laughs> this is the perfect jack russell look how good this dog is and then they breed these pug dogs with the faces that can't breathe and the bulldogs and the things and they breed them even worse and even worse and it's harmful for the dogs it's a shame for them because you get on top of the pedigree breeders who are trying to breed the perfect dog and actually breeding a sort of um, in building a genetic problem into the dog that the dog then suffers with for life on top of that you've got people that do puppy farming where there's a lot of money in these perfect dogs just any old dog from Romania just a street dog a mixed breed this dog and that dog and that dog in its lineage any old genetics that's not worth money that's just a mongrel but if you've got a beautiful pe pedigree kennel club registered you know proper dog that it's mum one crufts and it's dad's mum one crufts and it's got this lineage of dog shows and wins and breeding breeding you know breeding like like a upper class dog if you've got that then it's worth money so people not very nice people with bad ethics get one of those dogs it might cost them a bit of money or maybe they steal it and then they make it breed make it breed make it breed and then they've got loads of puppies to sell they're worth money and there's a lot of those pug face dogs or the um the the smaller breeds are used for this because it's easier to breed a load of small dogs in your back garden in your shed than it is to breed a load of rottweilers isn't it so they use smaller dogs for that and dog breeding pedigree breeding the kennel club that's all in the negatives <laughs> that's all in the con section isn't it it's all in the con section and strangely though it's seen by the people that adhere to those strange ideas the people that think those strange ideas are like written in stone somewhere and that they shouldn't be abandoned those because it's built an industry that they are part of because they breed the dogs they profit from them they go to the shows because the business that runs the show is promoted and the you know there's a lot of money involved in that they're not just going to abandon it but it's not good for dogs it's a con and uh, it's not just a con in terms of a negative, but it's a con job because there's nothing different about the pedigree dog than the mixed breed that I've got in terms of character and, you know, nature and heart. There might be, if you breed that into them, they might be more aggressive or a better rabbit catcher or whatever. We've gone way past that. We're not talking about the evolution of man's best friend as a hunting companion. We're just talking about aesthetics. And sometimes you breed a dog for aesthetics and it becomes more aggressive because you didn't think carefully about what you were doing or it becomes more docile because you did and even that can be a problem because maybe the most docile dog is maybe not the most well intelligently bred dog i don't know wow big ramble not supposed to be going off on a chuffer <laughs> don't shop adopt pets have mental health too let's get on to that and then finally we'll do the volunteer share duties and the other things like that so uh before we do pets have things too i'm gonna to do one more call to action which is this is our ganji kid channel it's on youtube ganji kid you can find us there that's the full length stream videos and then you can also find ganji cuts if you just scroll down there ganji cuts ganji kid art chat mental health monday all our other channels of the edits and stuff we do and what we're talking about today is mental health monday we've got our own channel for that mental health monday 10 subscribers it's growing slowly but surely and our most recent video about ghosts and talk boxes is available to view as of today <laughs> called to action you've been called to action uh so dog depression see today is not just about me and you as human beings today is about our animals and so <laughs> i thought what we'd do is a little segment for the animals So this is officially Mental Health Monday for dogs. Dog depression and symptoms. Eight ten tail signs. Tell tell tell. Eight tell tail signs. They've got tails, haven't they? Dogs. So it's like a pun. Dog depression affects a number of pets. Depression is not more prevalent in one breed over another. Any dog is susceptible to depression. It seems dogs showing symptoms also face life-changing events, such as a move to a new home, change of owners new addition to the family or another pet recently died there are eight signs to help identify if dog depression is a factor so i'm going to quickly quickly bang out some dog depression facts because it's making me feel guilty because my doggy waits for me now 
we're, we're at nine o'clock. We're going to move to 10 o'clock and that's his walk time. So he waits me this hour. He's like, oh, my walk, I'll wait this hour. And, uh, and I've got lots of editing to do. And we've done a really good episode, nice and succinctly. So I'm going to get these out. We're going to get these out. You're ready. This will make a little cheeky little cheeky little video, won't it? So eight things, eight points to make. Number one, a change to the dog's eating habits. A dog might start eating excessively, wolfing down a meal while still hungry, and other depressed dogs stop eating. They might nibble at their food and walk away without having finished a meal. Point one. Point two, look out for low energy. If the energy level in a dog yeah, the energy level in a dog suffering from depression also changes. The dog lies around sleeping all day. If you try and engage the dog, he or she acts listless and shows no enthusiasm. Becoming withdrawn. A depressed dog, that's number three, <laughs> becoming withdrawn. A depressed dog prefers to be alone. They will go into a quiet room to avoid you. The dog might hide under a bed or behind a sofa. When you call them, they ignore you, often failing to lift even the head in response. Oh, it's sad, isn't it? I've got how many now? Four. Severe weight loss, point four. Linked to the change in eating habits, dog depression cases usually find the dog losing a good deal of weight. Weight loss in dogs is troublesome, so keep a good eye on your dog's size. If more than a few pounds disappear, call your vet. Four. Five. Refuses water. As a dog withdraws from its owner and a normal routine, water intake is usually affected. The pet sleeps more, not playing, turning his nose up at food or water, so dehydration is a grave concern for dogs. If your dog's refusing water, contact your vet immediately. And I'm going to just also factor in drinking a lot of water, because I had a dog, Navin, and you know what, it actually did turn out, he wasn't depressed depressed but uh he started drinking a lot of water it was later on in his life and he'd slowed down we were doing i was doing less with him i was working a lot more as well actually i think uh it was was it before i quit hairdressing or just before um and i did i took him to the vet and i was like look he's drinking loads of water and the vet wanted us to check his urine to see if he had a kidney problem and in the end they sort of said we think he might be a bit bored and i thought well chuff it you know and when's the last time i bought him a toy When's the last? Because I do the usual. I take him for his walk every day. I do the usual. But then I'm getting on with my work, and you know, yeah, I'm, okay, fair play. And I went out and I bought him loads of toys. I bought him a UFO thing that dispensed treats, and I bought him a ducky and a squeaky. And, you know, right back to the puppy days. All the stuff that we just sort of took for granted that we don't do anymore because he's a grown up. You know, I just stopped buying him toys, didn't I? I? Just stopped entertaining him in that way because you just get used to the sort of routine. And so when he was bored, he was having a drink, the vet said. And I did, lo and behold, I played with him a lot more. I, you know, I concentrated, deliberately did it. And uh, he did, uh, he stopped drinking as much. He cheered up a bit. It wasn't a huge period in his life. You know, we kept an eye on these things, don't we? We're looking out for him. So when he did start drinking a lot, we were like, what's going on here straight away? But uh, yeah, you can drink a little bit more, maybe. That happened to me. And I and I'm a I pride myself on being a good animal owner. So like we got to the bottom of that straight away. But I had been uh, negligent, not in my you know not like negligent like neglect. But I'd got I'd become I'd taken things for granted that I needn't take for granted. I'd taken for granted that he doesn't play with toys anymore because he's an older dog. But actually, he did like the ducky. We had a little go on that until he ripped it to bits. <laughs> But, you know, if he wants to rip things to bits every once in a while, I shouldn't stop getting him things, should I? That's natural behaviour. It just means I have to put up with things being ripped to bits. Changes to eating habits. This is point number... I f oh, chuff it. <laughs> I forgot what number we're on. <laughs> I was doing it on my fingers. So we've got um, changes to eating habits is one, isn't it? Then we've got low energy, two. Becoming withdrawn, three. Severe weight loss, four. Refusing water, five. Low energy, six. We can't have changing to eating habits again. Weight loss, we've already done. Refusing water. Anxious and restless, seven. Sheds excessively and acts aggressive. Okay. I forgot what number we're on. And we're going to do anxious and restless. Dogs dealing with depression usually show signs of anxiety too. The dog jumps at little things like a door closing because it signals your departure from the house. The dog may seem unable to find a comfortable spot. Some dogs will follow their owners around from room to room, yet not want to interact at all. 
that's really interesting. I'll tell you something else. I'll tell you another one I've seen. Navin chewed his foot once or twice or a little bit. He started chewing his foot and it was separation anxiety. He used to have separation anxiety when we first got him. I got a rescue dog and they said he's going to bark at night for a bit. <laughs> you look out for that. Lo and behold, every time I left him at night, because he had his own little bed, own little bedroom, every time I left him at night downstairs in his little bedroom, he'd start his little yapping. Yep, yep. not like a rah, 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 but yep like separation anxiety he learned you know after the first couple of weeks he learned there was no problem i was there in the morning all he had to do was go to sleep you know he got he got over it and it's something that a lot of dogs deal with and grow out of but uh it was around the same probably same time as the drinking the chewing the foot uh i did notice he was chewing his foot a little bit once or twice and i was like what the chuff is he doing that for anxiety the vet said the separation anxiety, you know, I used to have to go to work at the hairdressers and he would spend some time at home on his own. And of course, we got used to the separation anxiety at night, but I didn't see his anxiety when he, I was at work. He was at home. I didn't see it. So I only saw the result at the end when he decided to chew his foot. So there are some things you can't see. They're animals. You can't talk to them. You can tell them things they can't talk about. You can read them, but you don't know. So this anxiety following you around the house not interacting, not being able to get comfortable. Yeah, interesting to look out for. Anxious and restless. Sheds excessively. Excessive shedding in case of dog depression links to dietary changes too. When a dog stops eating, their body redirects nutrients. So look out for excessive shedding. Acts aggressive. This one you won't be able to miss. <laughs> Yeah, acts aggressive. Finally, a dog suffering from depression may become aggressive towards his or her owner. The dog snaps, growls, wanting to be alone and acts touchy if you try and engage him or her in activity. Navin used to do that sometimes, definitely. There were times he was scared of me engaging with him in any way. There were times he, uh, he'd he been rescued and he'd had a difficult life and I believe he'd been the victim of violence because sometimes even if I was just going to go, oh, hello, Navin, like that, the, the raising of the hands would make him cower you know, uh, and acts aggressive. I've seen other dogs become aggressive over time because of problems in their environment. I've seen that in, in action sometimes. Uh, I've seen it dealt with by experts as well. So you can, you can deal with this. You've got to be really careful with children, dogs and children. Kids love dogs. Dogs love kids. But dogs don't necessarily know the correct way to interact with children until you teach them and vice versa. So a kid could pull, pull a dog's tail. A dog might try and bite a kid. You definitely... Having a dog... Maybe people don't see this with smaller dogs, but certainly the bigger dogs can be like having a loaded gun in the house. And you are fully responsible for not allowing the kid to play with the gun when you're not there. Or even at all. <laughs> even at all with the gun. But with a dog, you know, when you're not there, you don't want these things to get out of hand. You're responsible. And it's important if you're going to rescue a dog, if you're going to take a dog that's had a difficult background, that's been through the rescue process, it's important that you might need to take time to help that dog to rehabilitate, to learn how to behave. And if you've got children, then they are potentially at risk through this process. So you really want to be careful. You really want to be careful. That is not to say that you can't get a wonderful dog that's great with kids. That's not to say that at all. And it's not to say that the, the charity will try and palm off a, a dangerous animal onto you and go, <laughs> can't wait for those kids to get bit. You know, they'll be responsible too. They'll be responsible too. So that's really worth saying as well, isn't it? How to interact with animals if you can't have your own animals. I've got a list of things you can do here. You can volunteer. You can volunteer at a sanctuary, at a charity, somewhere like that, that needs people to help them look after their animals. You can also volunteer with people you know, with your nan's dog, with your neighbour's dog. Do you need a friend to take care of the dog for a day or two? Do you need anyone to walk it? We've got a friend who looks after my sister's dog sometimes when I can't be chuffed. <laughs> but quite usually, I have my sister's dog as well as my dog. You know, see if you can volunteer to share duties. You don't have to just, you don't have to volunteer at the farm sanctuary. But you could. Pet sitting goes into the same topic there. But it's great, isn't it? It takes the weight off somebody else and it helps you to engage with an animal and i think with pet sitting it's really important if you're thinking of getting an animal if you're thinking of getting a dog 
to go and interact can I maybe you know can she stay over tonight can I uh, borrow your dog because I want to see what it's like sort of thing that can actually be really healthy really helpful the farm sanctuary we're looking at now we've talked about that before but I do have a video on battery exhausted I'm not really trying to push battery exhausted so much anymore am I but uh, we will try and Ganji vegan will try and be resurrected in future and uh, you can watch that video you can watch it on battery exhausted now if you want this is one you're going to think I'm a bit out there but I'm going to say it anyway ducks at the park ducks at the park what's he going on about ducks at the park you're not supposed to feed them bread even though it's traditional oh what's going on you're supposed to feed they don't bake very often in their own habitat they're not big bakers so they forage for other things and so if you can give them some things that are more natural to their diet then it's better for them and they won't fill up on bread and then not eat their dinner so not supposed to give them bread but you know going to the park and feeding the ducks is simple it's engaging with animals we don't think of it very often we take it for granted in a way feeding the birds in your garden um, my garden is over in that direction <laughs> beyond the walls <laughs> beyond the walls uh yeah feeding the animals in your garden that is taken for granted sometimes but i believe it really counts and it can be a part of a regular routine and you can familiarize yourself with an environment and the nature within it the woods follows on from that i go to the woods now of course i'm not looking after the deer i'm not looking after mr rabbit I only barely see them once or twice, you know, when I'm out, out and about. But my, it's, it's fantastic. It's fuel for the soul to stop in your tracks and see Mr. Deer, Mrs. Deer. Sorry, they're not all male. <laughs> That's the patriarchy. Uh, to see the deer. And for a moment there, you know, your eyes meet. And then they scarper. But for a moment there, yeah, it's really um, mentally healthy to go out into nature and to be lucky enough to capture a glimpse of it. So not only do you find big animals in the woods and your garden, big animals in your garden like bears and raccoons where you live, <laughs> but you also get tiny animals and they're not to be overlooked. There is something beautiful and very meditative about sitting and watching a bee feed on the pollen of the flowers or watching ants run back and forth into your cupboard to steal your jam <laughs> no but seriously they're tiny little insects we hate a lot of them don't we we oh i don't like the flies oh i don't like the wasps but some of them are beautiful bees are wonderful and it can be really mentally uh refreshing just to sit and just watch them work and not really think about your, your own problems so much and to realize how things might just be allowed to slip away into not being as important maybe your worries maybe your concerns can just drift away while you watch the ants you know i like it anyway i like it i getting a goat a goat saved my life <laughs> i'm getting a dog saved my life so there's a lot of actual writing and it's somebody's personal account so i'm not going to just um, plagiarize them and read it all out on the internet but the bullet points here are going to cover some things that we have actually covered before so i'm just going to finish on this the love thing we covered that, didn't you? Companionship. The love thing. The responsibility thing. Let's not forget that. It is a big responsibility. But also, you're forced into feeding them, walking them, and cleaning up for them. So it makes you feel productive. It gives you a responsibility. And it, by engaging the, with the responsibility, you get into a good routine. The pride thing. Pride's not a virtue. We know that. But uh, you get a sense of pride when your dog learns a new trick. Ah, oh, bless. Yeah, you know, you love them and you feel good about them. And you can feel good about the work you're doing with them and the other animals in nature that you're helping as well. The social thing, absolutely, we talked about that. Secret social club, people just come up and talk to you. Is that your dog? It's a nice dog. <laughs> your dog Your dog just goes up and talks to people. I'm sorry about my dog. Uh, can I get her back on a lead? Um, there's also the general people up and down your street. People nod and smile at you and you can get into long conversations, yeah. Uh, not just that, you might join a group, might you, based on your animals. Physical health, the daily routines, the walking. Yeah, we love that. And they're finishing here with research it properly, which is what we've been trying to drive home. We're a very general podcast today about animals in general. But if you've got a particular animal on your mind, if you've got a particular thing you're thinking about, make sure to do your research. Make sure to visit somewhere where you can engage with those animals. Learn and listen. Find out what the people who own them say. 
another great tip. This is a good top tip. We'll go on Scotty's big face to finish. Big face. Uh, we oh look, we're being I'm being summoned. I've got to go and play Fortnite. Well, I've actually got to go and walk the doggy, so I'll have to wait a little bit longer. Uh, the um, the main final point though I wanted to make, I've kind of made. I think I wanted to say this though. We joined a dog club. It was one of the most beautiful. Uh, you're here now, Jay, so you can hear me saying it. <laughs> We joined a dog club and it was one of the most beautiful and wonderful experiences that I've had in my life, really. And I'm even just didn't realise it until I'm saying it now. Thinking about it is making me almost emotional. We went there with little Ruby as a puppy. She graduated. She had her little training classes. You know, it was wonderful for her to have a little training teacher. And uh, the teacher, she used to talk like this. Now get your dogs to do a seat. Now get your dogs to lie down. And the funniest thing happened was she said to the people in class, she said to the people in class, everybody knows from the way I'm dressed. And this is what I was going to go on to say. It changes, it changes, doesn't it? You look at the people, you learn, you do your research. Look at how they're dressed. Look at how they're living. Because that could be you. Everybody knows from the way I'm dressed that I like dogging. <laughs> that's what she said everybody knows from the way I'm dressed that I like dogging <laughs> and everybody in the class fell about laughing of course she meant walking in the woods with the dog she didn't mean meeting up in the woods to do sexual things with strangers but that's the colloquial terminology in our, in our country dogging in the woods dogging is a, a sexual malpractice it's not it's not, not malpractice, it's just a practice. I mean, you can do it if you like to. It's up to you. I'm on the internet. I'm definitely not promoting any weird sex on the internet, though, as well, am I? So let's be careful. But yeah, she, the, she, all of us lined up with all our dogs. Everybody can see from the way I'm dressed that I like dogging. <laughs> thought, bloody hell, have you got your stockings on underneath, love? So <laughs> that happened. It, we had this wonderful time at Dog Club. The dog grew. We learned. We made friends. Eventually, we outgrew the dog club. It outgrew us. There was a time it moved, it closed down, it changed. We went back with our new dogs to a new dog club. We started a new journey. But there were some really happy times. We had Christmas parties and uh, community. The dog had their own friends that they you know, saw regularly. Um, and when Ruby was really old, when she was a really old dog, in her final days, when we knew they were her final days as well, uh, I took her, the, the dog club was closed, there was no one there, but I took her there and she walked around and she recognised it and she smelled the door and I picked her up and I showed her in there and I said, do you remember when we used to come here and you used to lie down? Do you remember you likes to lie down? She knew, she knew. She had her happy memories as well. Yeah. So yeah, dog club was brilliant. That's a nice thought to finish on, isn't it? That's a nice thought to finish on because I've now been summoned to play for all night and walk the dog. So listen, you be good. You have been good. You've given me like a bajillion tippies, which was massive at the start. And we've fueling, the, that's fueling the ongoing improvement, which you're going to see in this coming next couple of weeks. I'm not going to bang on about it too much. I've done a video about it, but I really do thank you. I really do appreciate it. And I feel, you know, Nigel, Snippies, Capital K hasn't put his chat in here. But I'm sure he'll watch it later. Uh, We've had um, new people like 187 Fish, Mean Tone, who, again, I'm sure they'll see this later. Um, I feel this um, this positive vibe within the group, and I think it's a really good thing. And I think we're cultivating something good. So I'm really grateful to you. I'm really grateful to you. Yeah. So you be good. And if you can't be good, then uh, it's walkies. <laughs>